Uh, thank you for joining. Now it's time for uh, Dr. Ricardo to take place. Uh, he will be uh, lecturing about the systemic classic of acupuncture and moxibustion, the Jenju Jai Jin, uh, in everyday uh, clinical practice. So it's a very uh, interesting topic. Ricardo, at the moment, he's finishing with his uh, PhD in, uh, in China. I know him for many years and I I'm very happy to see him and to, and to have him here um, lecturing for that. So, Ricardo, thank you. You have your mic. You have your mic. Okay, thank you, Yanis. Um, is everybody, can everybody listen to me? Is my sound being... Yes, yes it's fine. Sound? Okay, okay. Okay. Um, I might need some of your, some of uh, your help because uh, I've prepared some images and I'm not very sure how to um, how to point them out. And uh, so, you just, uh, below your below your uh, your screen there is a share screen option, so you just click on that, and then you screen. choose share screen. Yeah, and then you just choose uh, the thing that you want to share with us. Um, uh, and uh, ah, okay, yeah, all right. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that, but uh, this is actually just my second time I've been using this. Um, and uh, I just wanted to start, ah, all right, with um, with this, I don't know if uh, everybody's seeing what I'm seeing. No, okay. So then. Um, uh, you have to have it open on your desktop. Um, it is open. When you want it to is open. Screen. Let me see. Uh, no, no. And um, let me see. Ah. Is this, is this, oh, okay. Um, so, um, let me start um, exactly, uh, let me start from the beginning. First uh, to say thank you uh, for Yanis' uh, invitation. And uh, I'm very glad to be here among uh, so many people, some, uh, some colleagues and uh and i don't know if students as well professors and um i would like to share some uh, some ideas on uh, my investigation of the jenju jai jing the systematic classic of acupuncture in Sebastian. and i would uh, uh on any interpret interpreting uh, and applying the teachings that uh, maybe we could use them in schools and in clinics of chinese medicine this is um uh, what I had uh, in mind. Um, this, um, this is actually considered to be the first classic of acupuncture in Max Sebastian, and uh, it was uh, written by uh, this uh, sir here that you, you see on the, on the image uh, uh, on the right side. And um, of course, nobody is uh, very sure about how he looked, but uh, it's uh, actually a very nice painting. And his name is Huang Fumi, and uh, Huang Fumi, uh, it's believed to, read, to have written uh, the systematic classic on the third century AD, so between 256 and, two, uh, and 259, uh, which makes actually 1,800 years ago. And uh, this is actually very interesting, uh, um, a very interesting book. And uh, because why? Because it compiles all the main sources, all the main classical sources on, um, on acupuncture and mass Sebastian. So it gathers not just the fundamentals, not just the basic theory uh, of it, but also the techniques and, uh, and the discussion, the, uh, let, let us say, the discussion on the uh, pathological patterns. So, so up to the time. And this is a, a sort of a window to the past into understanding how, the, how did the, the ancient uh, Chinese physicians 
would actually used acupuncture and understand and understood them and understood it so um it's uh, very important because uh, of uh, of this uh this uh, classic has been also uh very much uh, scrutinized um uh, by posterior physicians so um by many posterior physicians and uh uh even though um, uh, a lot of a lot of its uh, a lot of its content it's still uh, controversial at best and so many questions still remain about uh, uh, about it it's a uh, it's a very big um, a very big work um, a very big classic it um, it uh, is uh, structured around 12 volumes or books there's people also call it books and um, within, within each volume or each book, uh, so it's very long, so it's very long. And um, uh, some of, uh, uh, some of uh, the questions are that, uh, that remain are like these ones, for instance. Uh, so, for instance, this classic details methods of choosing points for treating many pathological patterns. And are we able to understand such methods? So this reporting us to the way that the ancient physicians, the ancient Chinese med uh, doctors would uh, think about uh, the body and about acupuncture and about the use uh, of the technique and the selection of acupuncture points. And uh, also another question, a great part of this content regarding therapeutic indications and the treatment of pathological patterns relate either to individual use of acupoints or to acupuncture, uh, acupuncture or acupoint formulas. So this is also uh, something we don't know. Um, just a, a, a curious fact, um, before I start, um, many people would, uh, would imagine that um, um, within the discovery of uh, the acupuncture points, they actually started you know, little by little and by individual points, but uh, this classic and some of the content that uh, it um, encompasses actually tells us it was uh, a bit different. Um, why? Because uh, uh, it's um, it it's been through analysis of the classic. It's uh, possible that it started by formulas. It started by acupuncture formulas, and by their indications, and then break down into individual points. And that's how we have the individual indications of points uh, that were break down by formulas. But this actually, uh, nevertheless, remains as um, a controversial point. And actually, uh, about this, uh, because uh, since I have uh, more or less half an hour to speak, it's actually not even close to, to for for uh, me to give you a general sense of. Uh, of what's going on inside of the of this classic, and so um, I um, I would just wanted to pass a simple idea, which is um, centered in the location and the using of acupoints. So, what can the systematic classic uh, of um, uh, of acupuncture moxibustion tells us uh, differently about this? Um, and I will start exactly by this first example so um all this um uh, all this text that, that is here is uh, done by um uh, by my translation and uh i, I i'm not including the chinese here uh, the, the chinese uh, version here uh, also by a moderator space uh, but also to cut down on the discussion because we don't have time and so the first example is centered uh, on again this question the the um, the systematic classic is uh, very much like the internal classic so it goes on and on uh, with question answer question answer question answer but there is no uh, yellow emperor um, so um, it's uh, simplified in this uh, symbolic manner how can we properly locate the acupoints so answer for example in the case of sanli in this case su sanli or the stomach 36 uh, it can be found uh, in the inferior part of the leg, which is aligned with the lateral malleolus. 
and uh, stomach 37 can be located when the foot is raised. Uh, when the foot is raised, this in brackets is my um, is my interpretation, revealing the tibialis anterior. The Wei Zhong, which is the bladder 40, can be found by flexing the knees, while Yang Ling Chen, which is the uh, gallbladder 34, is located by first standing with firm knees, slightly bent, and drawing a line from the former point, bladder 40, downward, and the point is then found on the young side, on the gallbladder channel. So this is the take, um, one of the old takes of uh, the systematic channel on the location of uh, two acupoints from the, from the stomach channel and uh, also their uh, reference in terms of the gallbladder channel and the bladder channel. This gives us sort of a 3D uh, idea of locations. I'm going to first give uh, these two examples, and then we'll go into discussion for me to just clarify in the end with a very simple idea. Uh, so having in mind the previous uh, uh, excerpt, here's another comparison uh, from the basic questions, uh, chapter 54. So when it comes to locating uh, Sun Li, stomach 36, this is found three soon below the knee. The top of the foot is easily visible. And this is a reference on the, uh, on the dorsalis pedis artery uh, or the point stomach 42. So uh, that it becomes also visible if one raises the knee. The stomach 37 is located in a depression on the lateral side of the tibia, while Xia Zhu Xu, which is stomach 39, can be found also at a depression below. And um, so, um, with uh, this uh, in mind, uh, I would like to uh, just wrap it up uh, before you, we, we start to lose uh, uh, grasp of uh, what uh, what's, uh, what I want to, to be the point here. So, uh, in comparison, that's why I mean in the beginning I said that uh, the um, the systematic classic is a co uh, it compiles information from previous classics. So these chapters, these excerpts that you seen that you seen now, um, they were uh, taken first from the systematic classic, the second from the uh, basic questions and now from the spiritual pivot on, on chapter four, exactly on the same uh, situation. The yellow emperor asks, how do we find them? The, the acupoints, of course, Chibo answers. The stomach 36 is found aligned with the lower part of the foot. Uh, Jushu stomach 37 appears by lifting the foot. And Wei Yang, which is bladder 39, is found by stretching and flexing the knees, while Wei Zhong, the bladder 40, is located by flexing the knee. Yang Lin Chen, uh, gallbladder 34, is located lateral to the bladder 39, when one is standing firm and bends the knees down in a squat position, both knees are aligned. Okay, so enough uh, comparisons, let's uh, break it down and uh, discuss this. Um, I will actually uh, point out a different, um, a different, uh, how do I, oh, yeah, here. And I point out different image so I can have, a, a, um, a, you, can, you guys can have a better understanding of what I'm uh, talking about. Um, so, uh, Um, ah, all right. This. Okay. Let me just. Do you guys see see this uh, nice leg? Uh, all right. Let's just. Uh, take uh, an idea and how uh, actually these uh, three excerpts have anything different to offer than or already what we know. Um, the case is that when we, uh, when we learn uh, acupuncture points and we learn 
the pathways of the channels, and I'm just taking the stomach channel here but, uh, as a consideration. Um, and also uh, in, well, in reminding with the excerpts, just uh, these two, these uh, two, three points. So stomach 36, stomach 37, and uh, stomach 39. So along the pathway of the stomach channel. And basically what the classic is saying, uh, which is a bit different from uh, what we learn uh, when uh, the textbooks usually mention stomach 36, uh, exa exactly three tsun below the knee, but then one, uh, one tsun uh, lateral. And um, according to these desc the descriptions, um, it's not possible to, um, to have uh, this vision in, in terms of the depressions that they refer if uh, we encounter this one finger lateral. But the only situation that is possible, if it's uh, as, uh, again, later on, I'm just going to uh, continue um, uh, focus on this, which is these depressions are found on the muscle divisions. So the muscle division between right, uh, between the tibialis anterior, and in this case, uh, the digitorio, the, this extensor digitorius, uh, long, digitorium longus. And uh, so let me just for you guys to check. So the muscle divisions are exactly what, uh, what is um, being um, talked about here being the pathway of uh, the, the stomach channel. So uh, my case here and my take basically on the interpretation of the systematic classic is that the uh, the acupuncture points, in this case, uh, just uh, the stomach channel, is found on the muscle divisions and not on the on the one finger lateral to the tibia. And uh, by this, uh, following then the um, stomach channel on this uh, on this area between the muscles, and this is actually supported by uh, by the texts as then we will uh, continue to, uh, to see uh, further on. I'm just, uh, um, for the matter of time, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how much time do I have left, um, but uh, I'm just going to uh, make examples on, uh, on the leg. Um, it's sure, just Ricardo, too much. Uh, 10 more minutes, you have 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, so that's why. Yeah. And maybe so, eight so we can have some questions. Okay, uh, so then I will um, I will uh, go back to to here and uh, let me see. Is everybody seeing the PowerPoint or not? Maybe not. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, these are the main ideas that uh, the stomach 36 is aligned with the lateral malleolus. So safe to say that it's along the tibialis anterior. Why? Because uh, stomach 37 and 39 are both found in the depression, which can be located on the muscle divisions. And this happens between uh, both muscles, tibialis anterior and this tensor uh, digitorium, digitorium longus. So these three acupoints actually indicate the pathway of the foot young Ming stomach channel. And uh, then uh, which is to say that uh, uh, the points uh, that uh, are uh, designated on the classics and uh, uh, systematic classic being no different is that all acupoints are found in the muscle divisions. And, um, and uh, just uh, uh, on a quick, uh, um, just to be quick, quick about it, in terms of, uh, for instance, we, stomach 31. We, we, we cannot see your uh, picture. No, we just see your. Uh, okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah, because I have to. <clears throat> so, in terms of, um, okay, okay, let's see here. All right. So, in terms of uh, this uh, stomach 31, which is located above the knee, posterior to stomach 32. Whoa, posterior to stomach 32. Um, 
uh, also the classic says that uh, it um, that is found between both muscles, between the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis. And also the futu is located six soon above the knee, found between the muscles in the muscle division, following the Yang Ming channel, uh, following the Yang Ming channel. So, uh, long story short, um, I would like to uh, break it down with these main ideas. Also, stomach 31 and 33 are, are, are following uh, the channel Fu Tiang Ming and the muscle divisions. Now, what does all this mean? That all these examples illustrate how this, uh, the ancient Chinese doctors would study and locate acupoints by emphasizing that uh, not only learning superficial anatomy, uh, of course, at that time, you have to, uh, um, the, which is different than the, the modern analysis of anatomy, that the learning of superficial anatomy has to do with the palpation and uh, associate it with the following the, the channel pathways. So the main idea is that uh, in acupuncture, uh, the, main, the main idea in acupuncture is to understand channel theory and these uh, pathological indications, such as uh, also the classics um, already already mentioned. In summary, uh, channel theory is uh, its proper location indications is crucial is a crucial theme for the old classic acupuncture books, and uh, the acupuncture points are only found on the channels when these are properly located. Only then the treatments can be effective. Location of acupoints is associated is associated with uh, superficial anatomy, and it comes through palpation. So then feeling and palpation for points is uh, therefore essential. And this is uh, uh, the main idea I would like to uh, send to you. And if you have uh, any questions, maybe now is the time. I had a lot more things to say, but uh, it's, it's impossible to put it in, in just half an hour. Uh, please, if anybody has uh, any questions. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, Ben, right. can, can somebody unmute if he wants to ask something? Is that possible? Sure. Yes, it's possible. Yes, yes it's possible. Yes. Okay. Um, I had uh, much more. Um, much more things actually to say and much more comparisons and um, and uh, also in terms of the, te the acupuncture technique I mean the, this is um, uh, a must but uh, the main idea that I, I really wanted to to drive home is uh, is that um, uh, channel palpation is the center of acupuncture and and and, and um, uh, channel theory uh, with all these its implications um, is the main uh, idea in the acupuncture. And uh, this is the center idea in all uh, um, the older classics. And uh, so therefore, um, I think that either uh, in teaching or either in our uh, uh, clinical practice, it is very important for us to understand uh, the indications of, of the channels how do they relate uh, to the anatomy and to the complaints, of course, uh, to discuss the um, pathological patterns uh, according with channel theory, and then select the points which are on top of the channels, which according to the classics, these happen within the muscle divisions. This is basically the summary. If anybody has questions, and I think now it will be a good time to put them. Well, Ricardo, since uh, uh, people are shy up to now, uh, maybe later. Uh, uh, sure. Maybe maybe I can talk a little bit if you want. I mean, I can give a comment on what Ricardo was talking about. Okay. It's, it's okay. Yes. yes. 
Please, Actually, please. just to clarify to it, to everyone, like as Ricardo was saying, these two classes, oh, I mean, actually these books, you know, these divided in 12 kind of like small books is a really complex classic, you know? And and I mean, I, I guess that Ricardo, of course, in 30 minutes is not enough to transmit what this classic has to offer, you know, because it has, I mean, apart from the theory, it has a lot of practical and uh, like a lot of practical techniques during the acupuncture. So as Ricardo was saying, uh, sometimes, for example, finding the points or, and combining that with the palpation, it will help for the practice, you know, to improve your, I don't know, like your acupuncture uh, technique and also to improve the way you treat like patients. So I think, I mean, in 30 minutes is impossible to summarize everything. So, I mean, people, I mean, it's a must that have to learn these kind of things, you know, but it takes time to, to learn these kind of classics, yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Henry. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, hey, Ricardo, just uh, yes. I was wondering, I know you are um, uh, a disciple of uh, Dr. Van Zuyi. Yes. He has, um, uh, he has based his practice in channel palpation. So exactly. I want to, to ask you if you have found some connections uh, between your uh, um, the teachings of Van Zuyi and uh, this uh, the Jinjo Jai Jin. Definitely. Actually, uh, this um, I would uh, want maybe to finalize uh, my lecture just saying that um, what I just said in terms of uh, classic uh, um, acupuncture and for instance, the practice of um, and the teachings of Dr. Wang Yi, they're more or less one and the same in terms of, of course, Dr. Wang, uh, his take is a modern take. And uh, what I just uh, researched, uh, either in the classics, either in the eternal classic, either in the spiritual pivot, either in the Jinju Jai Jing, are uh, basically corroboration of uh, his ideas his main idea, which is uh, we uh, have to understand that uh, by being acupuncturists, we are dealing with channels, we are dealing with, the, with, uh, with this phenomenon. And, um, and uh, to, um, to have uh, a grasp of this idea and to have a, uh, an understanding how effective it is in clinic, we have to palpate for points, we have to find find out the, the channel pathways and how do they relate with physiology and with pathology. And only through this, um, only through this uh, way is possible for us to have a good, uh, effective uh, clinical practice. Okay, um, thank you very much, Ricardo. You're welcome. Uh, for your time and uh, for joining us from China. Just one more, just one more sentence, very, very, um, very quick, if I may. Um, this is just a part of a, a course that actually I'm, I'm preparing, and uh, there is um, a cooperation being done also um, between um, between Greece, between uh, uh, the East Asian School. Yes, so it's if it's East, yes, it's the Athens College of East Asian Medicine. You will be teaching there. Exactly. Uh, first, first and second uh, year uh, students. And uh, you have opened this class for also for people from outside. So thank you exactly. for that. Exactly. And, so uh, yeah. that is uh, basically just not even an introduction. This is just a fragrance. <laughs> this is just a fragrance. There is so much, so much still uh, inside. Um, but uh, yes, uh, that, that is it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Ricardo.